In this video, we're going to be talking about the Intermediate Value Theorem, which is a theorem we're going to actually use from time to time in this class. And what it says is that if we've got a continuous function on a closed interval, it's going to hit all of the values uh, between f of a and f of b, so to speak. So if I've got a function, let me just draw a picture here. Um, if I've got a function that on the interval from 0 to 1, so let's put 1 there, uh, it's going continuously from 5 down to 3, looks like it's not drawn to scale, it must mean I've passed through 4 at some point, right? If this is y equals 4 right there, okay, if the function's continuous, I'm going to have to cross through that eventually, right? So in terms of these examples, these are kind of just like some more introductory examples, but then I'll also show you how we're going to use the formula and the occasional show that type question. So if f is a continuous function, what's the minimum possible number of x-intercepts on its graph? Well, I might need to remind you that an x-intercept is a place where y equals 0. So this is where f of x equals 0. I'm just going to kind of put a little star where I see that there's got to be a 0. Okay, obviously there's one right there. But if f is a continuous function, which we're told it is, when f goes from negative 2 to 5, it must have gone through 0. And when f goes from negative 1 to 3, it must have passed through 0. So I'm seeing at least three zeros on the graph, um, just based on the table. That's the minimum possible number of x-intercepts. And then if g is continuous on the interval 0 to 2, what values of b guarantee two solutions to g of x equal 3 on the interval 0 to 2? I think this is one I might draw a picture of. It's really easy to see if you draw a picture Okay, so what I'm going to need to do is mark 2, 0 is kind of already marked, and so I'm going from 8 down to 5. Might also mark 3, because that's something we're interested in. Alright, so I'm going from 8, 1 is B, so we don't know that yet, and then 2 is 5. So... If I'm wanting to make sure that I've got two solutions, I've got to cross that red line twice. And so that would be guaranteed to happen because g is continuous on the interval 0 to 2, provided that g of 1 was somewhere below that red line. So I'm just going to need to say, okay, this value of b needs to be less than 3. As long as b is strictly less than 3, we will guarantee two solutions to the equation g of x equals 3 on the interval 0 to 2. Now, the last example I've got to show you about the intermediate value theorem is this problem that starts with show that. And this is not really going to be that common of a type of question. Now, they will ask in free response sometimes, like, must there be a solution? And so I guess, you know, you need training on how to respond to this question. But this is not the type of thing you're going to be asked to do on a write-out question, uh, say, on a free response section of a test for quite a while. Right? We're going to stick with multiple choice at the beginning, get familiar with that, and then you know, start to justify our answers more and more as the, as the year goes on. But uh, we're talking about intermediate value theorem today, so I need to show you this right now. So if we want to show that there's a solution to f of x equals 4 on the interval 0 to 3, well, I'm going to probably need to um, check f of 0 and f of 3. So I'm going to plug in 0 to f, and I'm going to get negative 2. And then I'm going to plug in 3 to f, and I'm going to get 3 to the 3rd minus 3 to the 2 plus 3 minus 2. Okay, so that's 27 minus 9 plus 3 minus 2. And so if I like I look at that, 27 plus 3 is 30, subtract 9, that's 21, 2 more, that's going to be 19. However you need to do it to get there. Okay, I'm going from negative 2 to 19. And what's relevant about negative 2 and 19 is that negative 2 is less than 4, and 19 is greater than 4. So we are going to need to point that out. Okay, so I'll just say negative 2 is less than 4, 19 is greater than 4. But then there's the other thing that we have to check to make sure. We need to know that f is continuous. Now, I'm telling you, I forgot to mention it in the video on continuity, uh, but I don't think it's worth re-recording, um, that all polynomials are always continuous everywhere. That's a fact. Um, and you'll see, well, you'll have a reason to believe me, uh, you know, here in a few lessons, uh, once we learn about differentiability. But um, for now, we've got f is continuous, and f went from less than 4 to greater than 4. So that is going to be enough to show that, yes, f must equal 4 somewhere between 0 and 3. And specifically, I can say that it's going to be in the open interval 0 to 3, like not including 0 or 3, because I just checked x equals 0 and x equals 3, and neither of those x values gave me an output of 4. 
Okay, so I think, you know, with all of those examples and a clear statement of the theorem, that's really all you need to hear from me. Um, you know, with this and the idea of continuity and then also the average rate of change, that's going to give you enough to practice on. So, you know, go on, practice on the homework. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.